Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm It's Robbie Rhino and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the M3 A2 Bradley. This is an era 3 light tank for the Western Alliance in the Cold War game mode and it is preceded by the Stingray 2. In today's video I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know about this tank. I'm going to show you my commander and equipment setup, compare it to two other era 3 light tanks and I'm going to round off the video with two gameplays that hopefully demonstrate how to get the most out of this tank. So in terms of the Bradley, I don't see too many of these on the battlefield and when I do I don't see too many players playing this tank well compared to the other era 3 light tanks anyway and that is because it is a much more challenging light tank than all of the other era 3 light tanks and I'll be telling you why in today's video. You can see that it is a slightly larger profile light tank. It has a two shot ATGM auto loader capable of dealing 2600 damage per magazine which is 1300 damage per ATGM and it has a 25 millimeter auto cannon and it can use the multiple weapon system so switching between the 25 millimeter auto cannon and the ATGM uh, auto loader at no time penalty so we're going to head over here to the excel spreadsheet where i have put all of the stats of the m3a2 bradley in here in the middle we're going to compare it to the bmp3 which is an eastern alliance era 3 light tank and probably my favorite era 3 light tank it has use of atgms and a 30 millimeter auto cannon so a very good comparison to the bradley so we're going to be comparing both of these tanks and here on the right i have the stats of the maags a western alliance era 3 light tank to compare the stats for reference so we're going to get going to get stuck straight in to the Bradley and look at its hit points which is 3200 hit points which is best in this comparison green is the best red is the worst and yellow is my updated stats with my commander and equipment setup applied and I'll tell you about that in just a little bit but the Bradley best hit points in this comparison and only a little bit less than the MAAGS 3200 hit points is more than enough to take multiple shots and keep you in the game in terms of its view range, best in this comparison at 565 meters and only again a little bit worse than the MAAGS. More than enough to use your mobility and concealment even though you are slightly slower and slightly larger than tanks like the BNP3. You can still get forwards and spot for your team and outspot heavies with this sort of value so it doesn't matter too much. In terms of the concealment, it is slightly bad news for the Bradley, but it's understandable due to its slightly larger profile size. You get a still concealment rating of 0.36, where the BMP-3 smaller profile Eastern Alliance light tank has 0.43, much better concealed, and that's why I think it's probably just easier to play. You can hide in foliage a lot better and use this concealment figure. The Bradley's 0.36 still concealment is more sort of aligned with an M8 AGS, which is a slightly larger light tank as well, and plays more kind of like a uh, hybrid light tank medium tank in terms of the mobility then of the bradley it's 600 horsepower engine 22.21 power to weight ratio a 69.2 kilometers an hour top forward speed 32.2 kilometers an hour reverse speed 46 degrees a second hold traverse and 60 degrees a second on the turret you can see here that a lot of the stats of the bradley and mobility are covered in red it is a slightly slower tank than quite a lot of the other era 3 light tanks and especially the bmp3 which is king in this comparison however two good things about the bradley you have a fantastic reverse speed at 32.2 kilometers an hour meaning you can get down off of ridge lines very quickly and your turret traverse is 60 degrees a second meaning when you track enemies uh, with your uh, reticle it can be very easily uh, easy to do and keep up with them it helps you when you're circling tanks that are tracked uh, in terms of uh, this comparison then like I said, the BMP3 is king, but you can use the mobility equipment with the Bradley to boost it up, and I have done. You can see here that the stats have got to a very respectable level here on the right, highlighted in yellow, and I'll tell you about my commander and equipment setup in just a little bit. But just be wary, the Bradley is slower than quite a lot of the other era 3 light tanks, as well as the, uh, as you can see here, the single fire MA AGS, which is 105mm gun, has better mobility than the Bradley. Um, you can still keep it with the flow of the battle, but you do have to watch out uh, because uh, you will be outrun by things like the BMP3 and quite a lot of the other era 3 light tanks. And now we get on to the firepower of all of these tanks. You can see here that the Bradley has a 25mm auto cannon with 300 shots per clip, and it has a two shot ATGM auto loader 
the BMP3 here has a 30 millimeter auto cannon with 200 shots per clip, and it also has access to ATGMs, but they are single fire and not an auto loader. And here on the right is the MAAGS with a single fire 105 millimeter gun. So in terms of the Bradley's 25 millimeter auto cannon with 300 shots per clip, it fires APF SDS as standard, and it has HE as its second ammunition shell. It doesn't have a premium ammunition shell as you were. Like the BMP3 has APDS as standard, APF SDS as premium, and HE as its third ammunition choice. Uh, in terms of the APF SDS rounds on the Bradley, you can see here that the shell velocity at 1385 meters a second isn't too bad at all. That's for 150 millimeters of penetration and 30 alpha damage. And if you choose to fire the HE rounds, your shell velocity drops to 1100 meters a second. Your penetration goes to 65, so it does drop by over half at 65 millimeters of penetration for 50 alpha damage, so a 20 alpha damage jump. And in terms of the ATGMs, uh, you have a choice of standard ATGMs and premium ATGMs. They both have the same shell velocity at 329 meters a second. The standard ATGMs have 800 uh, penetration, 800 millimeters of penetration, and the premium 1000 millimeters of penetration. And both of them are for 1300 alpha damage, which is a phenomenal figure. And you can see here that a lot of the firepower of the Bradley is covered in green. It's got the best shell velocity on its standard round and the best shell velocity on its HE rounds. Uh, best penetration alpha damage on its HE rounds and best uh, penetration and damage on its uh, standard uh, rounds. But you can see here that the BMP3 does have the option to fire APF SDS as a premium ammunition choice on its 30 millimeter auto cannon, which has 1310 meters a second, 190 millimeters of pen for 15 alpha damage. Uh, bear in mind that this 190 millimeter figure is a lot better than the standard uh, round on the Bradley, so that's more effective um, at sort of mid ranges, but you're going to want to use these guns up close to personal to finish off heavy tanks and also fire at lightly armored tanks because these figures are going to struggle these penetration figures are going to struggle in era 3 to penetrate a lot of the heavy tanks even when you're right up against them you're going to have to aim for weak spots get to the sides and the rear and you're going to even struggle when you do that against things like a macabre mark 3. In terms of the ATGM and the comparison between the BMP3, you can see that the Bradley's uh, shell velocity on the ATGM is slightly worse than the ATGM on the BMP3. The BMP3 doesn't have a premium ATGM. It has an HE option with its ATGM launcher that has 355 meters a second, 120 millimeters a pen for 470 damage. Um, in terms of the penetration on the standard ATGMs, the BMP3 has 15 millimeters more penetration, but a lot less alpha damage at 980. And in terms of the premium ATGMs, 1000 millimeters on the Bradley of penetration for 1300 alpha damage is absolutely insane, and it absolutely blasts away the uh, HE rounds on the uh, ATGM launcher on the BMP3. And you can see here that the firepower is substantially better on the Bra on the Bradley. It's just how you use it, and uh, the reason people play the BMP3 a lot better in my opinion. It's just because it's more mobile, better concealed, you get into better positions to be able to use this gun and the ATGMs, um, and that's probably the only reason why. Uh, once you get this firepower working, you can deal a lot of damage very quickly in the Bradley, and we're gonna get on to the gun handling and the DPM now. So in terms of the Bradley and its 25 millimeter auto cannon with 300 shots per clip, the aim time is 2.3 seconds, the accuracy is 0.39, the DPM is 4511.4 on the uh, standard APF SDS rounds. The DPM, if you choose to fire the HE, is 7519, but with these DPMs you have to bear in mind you have to penetrate the rounds and it's 65mm on the HE, that's going to be near enough impossible to penetrate uh, even one round sometimes on some of the tanks, so that kind of figure you can kind of uh, ignore. Um, in terms of the reload for the 300 shots, it's 30 seconds, you have 1500 uh, rounds of ammunition in total, 9 degrees of gun depression and 59 degrees of gun elevation. And in terms of the BMP3, so you have 200 shots per clip, 100 shots less. You have better aim time, 
better accuracy, better DPM. Uh, the reload's only nine seconds for 200 shots on the BMP3. Bear in mind, they only do 15 damage per shell. You have um, six degrees of gun depression, so less gun depression on the BMP3 and less gun elevation. And with the ATGM launches, um, on the Bradley, you can fire 24 rounds of ATGMs, and on the BMP3, you can carry 14 ATGMs and 48. Uh, HE rounds with the ATGM launcher. The aim time on the Bradley is two seconds for the ATGM launcher, 0.26 accuracy, a DPM of 4,459 for the standard and premium ATGMs. The reload is 25 seconds for two rounds, uh, so that's 2,600 alpha damage worth of ATGMs in your magazine. Uh, 24 rounds, like I say, of ATGMs, 19 degrees of gun uh, depression, and 29 degrees of gun elevation. So when we're comparing both of these ATGM launches, you can see here that the BMP3 has a slightly better aim time, a much worse accuracy. The Bradley has a little bit less DPM than the BMP3, but it does have the option to fire premium ATGM, uh, ATGMs with 1000 millimeters of penetration, which is absolutely insane and very useful when you're firing at mid to long ranges. Uh, however, to fire one ATGM in the BMP3 is 12 seconds, so uh, over half less time than the magazine for the Bradley, but bear in mind this is for two shells. Uh, one great thing and one of the biggest things to notice is that 19 degrees of gun elevation on the Bradley. You have the launcher on top of your tank. You can just expose your launcher on ridgelines using this 19 degrees of gun depression and really surprise your opponents and they just can't fire back because they can't penetrate your hitbox of your ATGM launcher. Um, this is very useful. I'm pretty much every ridgeline you want to, you're going to come up against in the game and that's one of the major selling points of the Bradley but watch out for the uh, gun elevation on the ATGM launcher because it is twice as worse than the BMP3. So lastly we get on to the combined DPM using the auto cannon and the ATGM launchers on both of these tanks. This is using the multiple weapon system and a kind of technical um, combined DPM. So if you combine both of these DPMs, you get 8,970.4 DPM on the Bradley and 9,533.2 on the BMP3. You can tell that the BMP3 is a lot better, but still 8,970.4 DPM is absolutely crazy when you compare that to a single fire gun, like on the MA AGS of 4,430.4. It's, you know, more than twice better DPM when you take into effect the multiple weapon system and that's why these tanks with the multiple weapon system are so damn effective. So now we're going to get on to my commander and equipment setup and what I run. So with my equipment I run advanced loader, advanced traction system and advanced powertrain and with my commander I run sixth sense, born leader, rapid loading, steady aim, snapshot, run and gun, camouflage expertise, muffled shot and green thumb. Uh, in terms of my equipment, loader to help the DPM of the auto loader with the ATGMs and the auto cannon and I use both pieces of mobility equipment to help the Bradley get to the flow of battle and sort of keep up with the other era free light tanks and get out of harm's way and use the fantastic traverse speeds. Um, to evade incoming fire and with my commander six cents and ball leader standard rapid loading to help the dpm i have some gun handling skills and three concealment perks to help out the concealment of this slightly larger profile like tank so with my commander and equipment set up i now have a view range of 589 meters and a still concealment rating of 250. my engine power is now 630 horsepower with a 23.23 horsepower to turn ratio and i now have a top forward speed of just shy of 80 kilometers an hour, a reverse speed of 37.19 kilometers an hour, and my traverse speeds have shot up dramatically to 50.6 degrees a second on the hull and 62.58 degrees a second on the turret, meaning I am very nimble, slightly slower when I get to my top speed than things like the BMP3 and other era free light tanks, but still very nimble and it's good to sort of evade shells and get around your opponents and circle them. And when we look at the gun handling and the DPM, uh, the aim time is now 2.19 second on the uh, 25 millimeter auto cannon. I now have a 0.33 accuracy, a DPM of 4,808.7. And if I choose to use the HE ones, 8,015 if I can penetrate them. And the reload for 300 shots is now 20.46. And with the ATGM launcher, 
my aim time is now 1.92, accuracy of 0.22, the DPM has gone to 5304, which is very nice just on its own, and the reload for two HGMs is 19.42. And if you combine those, uh, the DPM of the 25mm auto cannon and the two shot auto loading HGM launcher, my combined DPM now is 9863.4, which is absolutely phenomenal, showing you just how good this tank can be if you choose to play it the correct way. I'm not going to show you the armor profile of the, the Bradley. I'll just tell you now, the turret ring is the strongest part of the tank. It's 76 millimeters of armor. The side and the lower plate is 50 millimeters of armor, and the upper hull is 38 millimeters of armor. So the Bradley can be penetrated by a lot of uh, HE rounds in the uh, Cold War game mode in Era 3. So watch out for that, and you will be uh, penetrated by pretty much everything that fires at you. So being a larger profile like tank, you do have to watch out for that. But that's enough of the stats of the M3A2 Bradley. We're now going to hop into the first gameplay and see how this thing gets on. So you now join me here on Harbron in the M3A2 Bradley and like I said in the review it took me quite a while to get used to playing this tank efficiently and how I wanted to play it because it is um, kind of an enigma in terms of the era 3 light tanks. You do have a slightly chunkier, uh, larger profile size. You don't have the same mobility and concealment and it's kind of halfway between a scout and a kind of sniping tank destroyer at mid range. As you can see here that I've chosen not to go the full uh, way forwards here on hard run. I'd usually go towards the sort of E line and spot out towards the south from this spawn. However, I've decided to sort of sit here on the D line here in D6, use the foliage, because I know there's quite a lot of foliage here and spot tanks that are coming in. I don't want to get sort of YOLO'd by any tanks because I know I don't have the mobility like the other era three light tanks too get out of the way. I might have these sort of traverse speeds, but even with the mobility equipment, I don't have the sort of the raw top speed to get out of harm's way and make it back towards um, the north where our spawn is. So I'm just going to hang around this area. I've switched to the uh, premium ATGMs that I run. And as you can see, I run full premium ATGMs and I still make a lot of silver if you have a relatively decent game with these ATGMs. And we fire our first one there at the Makava Mark III, but unfortunately we kind of reverse back trying to avoid shell and we have no control over the ATGM and it just goes into the distance. But we reload uh, very quickly with this two shot autoloader and we're going to try and get a, a shot or an ATGM right into the side of that Makava. And we start off the game with a very lovely 1312 damage and 618 assistance and you can see here that it doesn't really take that long at all to reload two of these shells um, i'm just making use of the smoke consumable there i run the uh, large med and the large uh, repair kit as well as the enhanced smoke consumable to improve my concealment a little bit more and it does help a lot more especially since they've updated the uh, enhanced smoke consumable where it uh, sort of explodes mid-air and covers more of your tank it does help a tank like this which is slightly larger profile get out of harm's way so i felt things like uh, things were getting a little bit too hot on that side of the map there were quite a few heavy tanks pushing towards our spawn so i've come over here to support my heavy tanks uh, in another light tank which is uh, has a better top speed and can sort of stay hidden a little bit better than this tank i would have probably uh, stayed in that position just a little bit longer um and then i could always get out of harm's way and i felt like more confident but you've just got to push the limits of this tank see where your limits are with your commander and equipment setup and make sure you don't sort of go too aggressive and get caught out because with no armor you've got taken out very quickly in this tank but you can see here i'm just trying to support my friendly tanks we get another atgm there um, into a tank straight ahead of us and we've pushed our damage total to 2.6k direct and 711 assistance and now we're just making use of this hard cover i try and use hard cover as much as possible in the m3a2 bradley whereas something like the bmp3 i'd try and get further forwards hide in bushes and this one i'm just making use of the fantastic high alpha damage at 
GMs to support my enemy tanks and if needed I can go and scout, if needed I can push forward with my mobility um, but right now I'm just supporting the other light tanks on our team and it's kind of a support support tank so what I mean by that is you're supporting your heavies but you're also supporting the light tanks that are getting the vision out and you're absolutely decimating tanks from sort of mid to close range with this tank and it can work at long ranges with these ATGMs um, the shell velocity is kind of standard for an ATGM, it's not too bad at all, it's worse than the BMP3 but uh, you can make it work even at long distances, especially at tanks that are stationary and with this penetration on these premium 1000mm penetration for 1300 alpha damage you really can do so fantastic work with these ATGMs and I haven't even reloaded the um, 25 millimeter auto cannon as of yet i believe in this replay i might be using the stock 25 millimeter auto cannon so just worse dpm i believe however it's useful for things like that where you're finishing off a tank like a bmp3 with no uh, armor and i'm really in my atgms and it can get you out of a jam if you're getting rushed by a light tank and you're in sort of mid reload of your uh two shot atgm uh, launcher so it's seven versus seven in this game here on Halbron. um there's a lot of tags towards the eastern side of the map but i noticed there were tags coming towards our spawn there's the light tank that's fighting our friendly light tank but i noticed the back of this m1a1 oh yeah that's a juicy shot and then we're going to put round after round with our auto cannon and this is the kind of target you want to be shooting with your auto cannon the back of an m1a1 abrams um it's just easy to penetrate with these rounds and i'm putting round after round he's not even moving um i thought this was a bot but it doesn't look like a bot name i think it's just someone that's stationary and uh, you get shot by this auto cannon you feel like it's not doing much damage but if you do let this rip into you you do take a substantial amount of damage and you have to be wary that they have an auto loader to switch to with their multiple weapon system with atgm so you have to think about that when you are coming up against this tank but i've got one shell left in my atgm two shot auto loader and i'm going to try and come up behind this abrams or the chieftain and finish them off we get the rear of the Chieftain Mark 11. Yeah, we roll kind of standard for the ATGMs and finish him off. And that's what's so wonderful about these ATGMs. Tanks on around kind of 1,000 to 1,000, sort of 400, 500 uh, damage, you can roll high and take them out. And that's a fantastic feeling. And it can get you out of a lot of uh, sticky situations. So with the damage support that we've put in, we managed to help our teammates take that one down. We fire an ATGM in celebration. And that's a first... Uh, good replay in the m3a2 bradley with a nice profit of 233,000 silver we get our first mark i believe um, 1649 base experience points mvp we get three kills 9.3k direct damage and 1380 assistance showing you how powerful this tank can be so we're going to head on now into the second gameplay and hopefully i'll show you some more about how this tank can devastate the enemy Righty ho then, you've joined me here in the second replay of today's video and we're here on Pearl River in the M3A2 Bradley and if you look towards the bottom left you'll see that I'm on 3000 hit points which means that I was playing this without the upgraded turret. The turret is one of the last upgrades I believe on the Bradley. Uh, I do have the upgraded ATGM and this is probably with the stock 25mm auto cannon as well but here on Pearl River on this team destruction battle we've decided to come to the central location which is a bit of a risky play but i have some heavy tank support and i'm going to try and uh, get some shells towards the north of the map and try and get to these little sneaky positions here in the center where i can use the fantastic 19 degrees of gun depression to look down on my enemies and rip them a new one and uh, when we're fired at that m1 there we didn't want to fire directly into the side of the turret or anything like that where we have a chance of reducing our atgm damage with the composite armor so we went for the sort of drive wheel and we managed to penetrate set him on fire and we've already dealt well i was going to say 1800 damage make that 3123 as we go through that t72bu from the front showing how good the penetration is on these atgms um we're constantly switching between the uh, auto cannon and the atgm uh, just to sort of see if we can get some sneaky shots in if someone turns to the side or if we get another light tank come up and try and help their heavy it's always good to be prepared with at least one of your weapons uh, but this is what i'm talking about about using this 19 degrees of uh, gun depression here over this ridge line 
uh, we're managing to get an AKGM in full back while the second one reloads and within a short space of time we can get another ATGM in right into the side of that M182 open so now we're going to see if we can penetrate any of these auto cannon shots um, you don't really have to get the uh, upgraded auto cannon I would recommend doing so but it's still very useful even with just the stock uh, auto cannon and the upgraded ATGMs using the fantastic penetration on the ATGMs it really is all about those ATGMs it's such a powerful tank and in the first sort of three minutes of this battle we're already up to 6k direct damage and 1620 assistance it looks like our friendly heavy tanks have held this position for me which allows me to come over use the fantastic gun depression again right into the side looking down on that leopard 2 set him on fire and we take that leopard 2 out of the game and now it's just a case of finding these last four heavy tanks and it's going to be another win and that's a very quick battle for the m3a2 bradley you see just how uh powerful this tank is and i've noticed that there's a tank coming i'm using the sort of free aim camera looking around this rock the next compat competitor is this leopard 2 unfortunately we only had one ATGM, atgm loaded we're trying to get around this leopard 2 but that has better uh sort of power to weight than me i believe stronger armor and he's pushing into us and doing a great job of trying to stop us getting around him our heavy tank comes to help but kind of blocks our path around him but still it's a distraction we're getting some good shots into the side of this leopard 2 improving our damage with this auto cannon showing that it can be very useful and we only have a short amount of time on our 80 gms but that leopard 2 was uh, hellbent on killing us fair play to him he wanted to get a kill at the end of the game but our heavy tank avenges our death with the t 2 bu on our team taking out the leopard 2 and now it's just this lonely challenger 2 on the enemy team and he's getting swarmed by our heavy tanks and that's going to be a game finished in under five minutes i believe where we've picked up a substantial amount of damage showing you the fantastic firepower of the m3h bradley we make a profit of 118,000 silver with a first class medal 1657 base experience points two kills 9.3k direct damage and 1620 assistance i highly recommend getting this tank it takes a while to get to use get used to playing this tank and getting used to this sort of ambush style tank destroyer stroke light tank gameplay but it can be very powerful and it can be a lot of fun and those ATGMs are absolutely beautiful but thank you very much for watching this video I hope this review was very useful to you I hope you're having a great week and until next time I will see you on the battlefield and bye for now